right, good afternoon. So just start off, this is still a preliminary investigation. There's still information that's gonna be coming out. Uh, we're trying to still put some pieces together. Um, what I should have started with is thank God Almighty that the law enforcement's okay and that our public's okay. Um, after what unfolded this morning, this afternoon, and what could have unfolded, could have been much worse. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit further into this, but you know, things were slow, they were methodical, but our women and men were professional in everything they did. You know, we weren't gonna rush into anything because at the moment there was nobody hurt. We wanted to make sure that things were done properly. And that's why we're very blessed. Everything worked out very well for law enforcement. It's a sad outcome for one individual's family, but at the same time is for what he did and could have done, it could have been way worse for those that were innocent people out there. So I wanna start off, I wanna thank FDLE. We have special agent in charge, Mark Brutnell, Tampa Police Chief Lee Barkall, Zephyr Hills Police Chief Derek Brewer, U.S. Marshals were involved, the Pasco Fire Rescue, Hillsborough Sheriff's Office, their EOD was here for technical support. I also want to thank Lowe's. Uh, we're in the parking lot, and honestly, you talk about a great community in Pasco County. Uh, Lowe's came above and beyond to assist us because we were out here for a long time today. So we thank him for that. Uh, the suspect in this case is Alfredo Luis Rodriguez. His date of birth was 225.92, and he was 31 years of age. And the location was right up the street at Ruth Avenue and 301. Um, this morning, the Tampa Bay Marshals Task Force assisted. They were called out because Mr. Rodriguez had a couple warrants. The inactive felony warrant, Pasco County for criminal mischief, an active Hillsborough warrant for a VOP out of grand theft out of Hillsborough, and probation for grand theft in another location. But the primary reason was he was a suspect in a homicide. And so because of those warrants, we wanted to bring him in and the uh, agencies that were involved wanted to talk to him about the homicide that he was possibly involved in. Um, arrested, you know, he had a long history. He was arrested for resisting with violence, battery hit and run, DUI, and leaving a scene of a crash. So this is somebody that's been involved in the criminal justice system for a few years. Around 6.45, the Pasco Sheriff's Office detective who was on the Marshals Task Force notified a dispatch that he was going with the U.S. Marshals Task Force to the location to serve the warrants. The notified patrol, um, as they were going up, they go to the door, they knock on it, and the suspect's girlfriend answers. They quickly take her from the scene. She's pregnant. They wanted to get her out of there because they were afraid he was gonna be violent, which their instincts proved would be right. Uh, very shortly after, he starts firing rounds at the task force. At that time, a member of the Tampa Bay, a Tampa police officer who was on the task force returned fire. Pasco Patrol starts hearing this over dispatch. They start arriving on scene. The suspect then continues to fire rounds. At one point, a Pasco deputy returns rounds on the suspect. So this just leads to the very beginning. This is still seven something in the morning when this is going on. You know, as this is going on the rest of the day, our members go out there, our SWAT team gets activated, Hodges negotiation gets activated. All these agencies that's here today put forth all the effort we can for a peaceful resolution. You know, and these type of things, I get it. We could be cowboys and run in there, but that's not what we were supposed to do. We are trying to find a peaceful resolution because what we did not want is one of our members shot. What we did not want was one of our canine shot. And what we wanted to do was find a peaceful resolution to this situation. The other one too is we very quickly, while this is going on, was remove the citizens in the area that we felt were at risk. Because you never know where those rounds are going. Those rounds don't have names on them and they could hit anybody. So we wanted to make sure they were safe. So as the stay was going on, our tactical team went out there, house negotiation, our drones, everything we could utilize to have a peaceful resolution. So we were going through this methodically and the suspect was talking to us throughout the time. He was on and off the phone. We, so we know that in the beginning, he, he not inclined to us at all that he had been shot, no injuries. He was talking to us. Around 1245, we know there was one room left that he was in, our robotics, drones, everything we were trying to do to get back there, our, the women and men, the SWAT team, everything was going forward. We were trying to still negotiate with them. However, at some point, we were able to make entry into that room. As we made entry, we realized that the suspect had possibly self-inflicted gunshot wound to his head. So we're still working on that right now. But I can tell you that there is a resolution to this situation. But I wanna go back to one of the things I said earlier. We are blessed by God that nobody, law enforcement was hurt, no citizens were hurt, none of our canines were hurt. 
The other one too is we're blessed by God to be here in Tampa Bay. To be here with these outstanding women and men in law enforcement and public safety, you know, at our fire rescue out there, everybody. That, you know, it's a sad day when these things happen, but at the same time is that we come together. And I get these criminals now, they seem like they're being more violent towards law enforcement because they see what goes on across the country where laws aren't enforced. Law enforcement can't do their job because there's politicians out there that are holding them back. That's not gonna happen in Tampa Bay. That's not gonna happen here in the state of Florida. We will enforce the law. And so this is a message back out there to criminals. If you fire upon law enforcement, if you fire your guns upon our good citizens out there and our citizens that are just trying to live their lives, we will do everything possible to apprehend you. And this situation, it looks like a self-inflicted gunshot wound, but if you shoot at us, we will fire back at you. That's what we're trained to do. We will make sure at all costs that our community will be safe. And that's what all the women and men up here that we will defend, is the fact that we will not be like other areas of the country where criminals run those neighborhoods. In our community, in our state, we're gonna make sure law enforcement and the good citizens still run our communities. So with that being said, I wanna bring up Mark Rutnell, the special agent in charge of FDLE. Thank you, Sheriff. Sheriff said Mark Rutnell with FDLE here in Tampa. Uh, pursuant to a mutual aid agreement that we have with the Marshal Service, we are here conducting a criminal investigation into the use of force, deadly force, by a member of the Tampa Police Department and the Pasco Sheriff's Office. Um, I can echo the Sheriff's comments that uh, today was a classic example of great restraint and patience. Uh, I live in this community, so I was very proud to watch the collaborative effort of all the agencies that are here today. The partnerships are immense, uh, well old machine, but again, the, I go back to the restraint and the patience that was showed by all the agencies here today to hopefully end a peaceful resolution. Unfortunately, uh, this individual chose this path. Uh, these officers were doing their job this morning, and he fired upon them, and they fired back. And that's why we're here today to uh, conduct that investigation. It's a long process. We have a lot of work to do today, but we'll get it done and we'll present that to the State Attorney's Office for review. So thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Lee Burkhardt, Chief of Police for Tampa. The Tampa Police Department plays a significant role in the U.S. Marshals Task Force. And as the Sheriff alluded to before, the U.S. Marshals Task Force goes after the most heinous criminals. They are the best of the best, the most highly trained that go after our worst of the worst. And in this case, we had an outcome where the citizens and the officers were okay. Obviously, that's our main concern. And the officers, thank God, they were shot at. We had our officers that were shot at and one of my officers returned fire. And thank God they were not hit. In this situation, we owe that extra training to the U.S. Marshals for their extra training that they provide for our officers to do this. The community and our uh, task force and all of the agencies that are out here at the Tampa Bay area like the sheriff alluded to before, has an excellent working relationship with all the other criminal justice stakeholders and the community members themselves. And that's why we're at this resolution that we're at today. So thank you. Anything, any questions? Sheriff, do you know specifically, was it a, one of the robots or a law enforcement member who found him in that room that you mentioned? Yeah, this is a so far an investigation. We had numerous different robots that were going in there, members that were going in there, but I go back to it, you know, we're in the command bus, we're listening to what's going on, we're making some decisions that are happening out there because, you know, the frontline women and men, they need to be able to make those decisions. And so, you know, we're going through our lines. What do we do? How do we do this? And one of the things that came up was about, you know, our canines are trained or SWAT, so tactical canines, and we're going to send the dogs, and we're like, no, hold on. Let's get those robots in first because we all agree we do not want to put those dogs in harm's way. This guy's already shot at law enforcement. He's shot at people. We don't want to harm a dog either. And so, you know, sending those robots in, sending everything in. So I'm not sure if it was through a, a mirror that they were able to get into that room or was it one of the robots that got in. But this is where I go back to, you know, public safety isn't cheap. Um, we deal with protecting lives. And so any tool possible, we can have resolutions like we have now where 10, 15 years ago, that SWAT team would have been kicking in doors, going through. And now, we, you know, the professionalism has it's, it's immense right now. You know, it's been always great, but with what we can do with technology, it, it gets even better and we can make things safer, but at the same time is, you know, they cost money. But no matter how much hardware we have, how much software we have, it always comes down to the human heart and the human head. And those are the things that came together to say, hey, let's get in there and make sure everybody's gonna be safe. And like it was alluded to before by uh, 
Special Agent Charge Brunel, he chose his own fate. He had hours to come out on his own. He had hours to make a decision to say, hey, you know what? I did something stupid, but let me end this peacefully. He chose his own fate. Any general thoughts on what he said in the conversations that he did have over the phone? And I don't know whether you said the hostage negotiations or what he said to other people that were on the phone with, so sorry. Sheriff, can you tell us uh, what homicide he was able to get a Yeah, so that, I don't want to get, it's not a Pasco case. Um, it's one of the jurisdictions and uh, within outside county, so they were still going through some things now, so I don't want to, I don't want to interfere in their investigation. It's not a Pasco Sheriff's Office investigation, but we were out there to assist with the, with the uh, Marshal's Task Force to go out there to apprehend this person to bring him in for questioning. It was a jurisdiction in Tampa Bay. Okay. Sheriff, we heard a couple loud booms coming from the house, and we saw the battering ram, and I know we heard that the fire rescue and construction team was coming in. Can you tell us what, what we need to try to get to come out with that kid? Yeah, so if you heard a boom, that's the flashbangs, um, repercussion bangs, trying to get movement, trying to get him to, you know. So we know, you know, there's sometimes he won't talk to us for a little bit, so we just want to make sure he's alive. There's been points where he got up, you know, our people knew he was walking around, so we knew, um, you know, his, he was still alive at that point. You know, with the Bearcat, you know, we were at, you know, we were trying to go through some windows. We had to get through some windows to make sure that we can get the tear gas in there. Unfortunately, it probably wasn't the best structure to begin with, um, structurally sound building. So you take a window and things start falling. Uh, the part with fire rescue, and I give Chief Perez credit, this is probably, this is probably the first operation we had because the evolution of our partnership together with Pasco Fire Rescue, um, the medical side, the tactical side, they were out there for several reasons. One is, if God forbid somebody got shot on our side, um, we were able to render aid quickly. If the suspect came out and he was wounded, they were able to render aid quickly. The other side of it is, if you know, you don't know what this guy's doing inside. You don't know if he's gonna start, if he has gasoline, he's gonna start a fire. They were there to make sure that they can uh, turn that fire off, you know, Put water on it put foam on it do something like that so that's the whole part of slow methodical but having the right pieces in the right place as i said there's times where we have to go in hastily and take care of a situation there's other times like today where we can just methodically go through it but it was not the best structurally sound building to begin with and so we have to make sure that as we go through it it was safe right now what fire rescue is going out there for and we appreciate chief president the team is making sure that, that that building does not collapse on forensics as they're going into that situation now yes ma'am And it goes back to the point that this guy was shooting rounds out the window at anything that moved. And so it wasn't like he shot at us at one point and then it kind of ended. This guy was continuously shooting at us for a long period of time. And so that's why we have to go out there to get those neighbors to say, get out of that situation. It's not safe. And so I, you know, 100% with those homes out there, you don't know what one round goes. You don't know who's walking their dog. What kid could be standing on a school bus? You don't know those things. And that's why all these situations are extremely scary for our citizens out there, for ours, you know, and as I said, we train, all of us, all our organizations, we train for these bad days all the time because think about it, it was a violation, VOP for grand theft. Um, you know, yes, he was a suspect in a homicide investigation, but when you hear the initial charges, you know, people just knock on the doors and I, there's nothing routine, but at the same time it's, hey, just come out and talk to us. I can imagine the task force members do this all day long. They go pick up people all day long. You know, the one time they fire on us, this is why we have to spend hours and hours on training for that one time when that person does fire upon us that they can respond you know proficiently and the excellent way they did today we talked to several neighbors that were displaced during this you know how many people were removed from their homes in the area right? I, I apologize i don't know exactly how many you yes, we were at this address last month and to serve a warrant on this man is this the first time you've tried to serve another warrant on him since that time i don't know when, when was the last time i know we were out there previously I'm not sure between that time and this time if this is the first time we make an interaction with him, but you know what? Who knows what? You never know what's in his mind, and now we never will as to what he thought we were going for today. Maybe he was the prime suspect in a homicide, and he didn't. Now he thought the walls were closing in on him. Maybe there was other crimes that he was involved in that he didn't know, and he thought we knew. So you don't know how people react, and a month is a long time in law enforcement. 
you don't know what what crimes or things people may have done in a month but when he came to that door this morning you gotta be prepared yeah and he probably thought the end is coming and unfortunately he put the pregnant girlfriend at risk he put his neighbors at risk and he put law enforcement at risk and he ended it on his choice not ours all right appreciate everybody thank you